Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans on the members area. How are you doing? It's Russell here from Porky's Corner. But you already know that, don't you? Because you're members and you won't be members if you want hardcore boxing fans or even like me. I hope you're all well. Uh, this is fourth members video at month. We do 10 a month. Uh, today I'm joined by a lad from Perth in Scotland called Andy. He's making his debut, so be nice in the comments section to him. Uh, we're going to see how it goes, and if he enjoys it, we're going to have him on uh, on YouTube, probably end, back end of next week. Uh, so that's about it, really. I just want to thank everybody for liking and subscribing and sharing videos and staying on as members. Those of you who cancelled uh, while I were in Turkey probably thought I was going to pop my clogs. Well, it's nice to know that uh, 22 out of the 26 of you are back. So that's good, isn't it? So. That's dedication for you, but feel free to cancel your subscriptions this month because it's Christmas and I don't like taking money off people for Christmas. But can I just point out that YouTube take thirty percent and then there's twenty four percent tax off it. That's that fucking US tax. So technically, it's a fucking it's fuck all in it. But it do, we do put it towards uh, production for the weapon of the week and the helmets. I try to separate it all and put it for elements. So what's left of it? But I want to thank you all very much. But like I said, if you want to cancel, it's December and times are hard. Feel free. I'm not forcing anybody to be a member. All right. But I do appreciate it. And uh, thank you very much. Over to Andy on his debut on Porky's Corner at Members. How are you doing, Andy? You all right? Good, thanks. Yeah. All good. Just about the shovel trying to get everything together. <laughs> I know what. <laughs> Just trying to get organised for coming on. I was like, wow. Um, I nah. didn't get organised myself today. I thought I had a can of guinea sink fridge. I am. I found this. Ah. Hard work on my stomach. This is gassy. It's gassy, isn't it, Stella? Have you ever had well, it? It's healthy. It's a Guinness. But Guinness. I don't, I've done it. I was drinking spirits. Yeah. yeah get, surgeon says to me, uh, no alcohol, but if you do have some, have Guinness. But... I had half a can of that tonight, it's nearly crippled me. But uh, but anyway, uh, I've jotted a few things down, Andy. Is that all right? You're obviously an avid boxing fan. Yeah. I just wonder what you thought about David Allen's opponent that he's got for next week. He's a guy, Norton Five. He's approaching 39 year old. He's had five fights from Cameroon and he's not had a win and he can't punch for Toffee. I just, right. if you. If you thought that's about just as low as it can get, and I'm not saying that because I don't speak to Dennis no more with promoting the show, but it's a bit of a shit feast, isn't it? Yeah, it should be better than that, but better opposition than that, you would imagine. Board of from where from Please. who Dave's fought before, you know. You what, mate? From who Dave's fought in the past, he should be he shouldn't be dropping down that far. Louis Sorties, Dylan White, David Price, Tony Yoker, just to name a few, he's been in with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He didn't beat him, but, you know, he's just to name a few. And I just think that Scraping Barrel coming coming off on the heels of Steffi Bull's show the other night that had yeah. three fights on and the three uh, home fighters had never had a loss and the three away fighters had never had a win. I mean, who, who, who's passing? Uh, right? You know, this guy, if he, if he ends up brown bread, this Cameroon guy, because Dave Allen can whack. Yeah. Dave Allen shouldn't be going in with this guy. This is shocking, this. It's yeah. shocking. And I'm surprised it's being sanctioned. And he could get carried out on a stretcher. This is a disaster waiting to happen. And I just thought I'd get this out now. Uh, Especially the way the referee's been going lately. That's... Yeah. yeah, 10 days before, nine days before the fight, I'll get this out. And if anything happens on night, we could just press front members there. We'll put it straight on YouTube. And then I can yeah. say, well, I told you. But I don't want to be one of them. Yeah. I told you so. But what are the board doing for the sport at the moment? Because this, this is bad. This, this is real. Oh, bad. they're doing some damage, isn't it? Well, like I just said there, uh, Norton five against Dave Allen, who was nineteen and five. Yeah, and a puncher. So and a, and a what? And he can whack. And and like I said, the guy's uh, ten year older than him as well. Yeah. It don't get any worse than this, does it? Away, no. away fighter, there to lose, never had a win, can't punch, 10 year older. 
he was welcoming him with me. Hey. <laughs> he was well putting me in with him. Yeah. You might as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the cheek to ask for people for money for tickets for these fights as well. Eh? It's just ripping everybody off. Man. Sure is, isn't it, mate? What do you think to Ben Davison's video that has come out today and he's saying he'll train Anthony Joshua? I think I've got the... Uh, have a look. I'll just get the video up. Ben Davison says he'll train Anthony Joshua. Just like he said he'd train Wilder after... Uh, Fury uh, beat Wilder for the first time. Ben Davison were out there as a pundit and he were making moves to put it on Wilder. I mentioned it on my channel. Everybody said they were full of shit. Well, now they might believe me now. That's what was on behind the scenes. Uh, I think it's in bad taste to one about that, yeah. uh, especially when he's still with Robert McCracken. Uh, he's not officially left Robert McCracken. I don't know what's happening, but he shouldn't be coming out and doing things like that. These, these people don't, Understand how it all works, do they? No, that's he wouldn't say that. About stabbing, you. Isn't it? Yeah, he wouldn't say that about you if you were, would he? <laughs> I'm yeah. sure uh, you'd soon get put in his place there. Eh? <laughs> oh, he get put in his place, all right. You get tucked on yeah. and uh, red riot act. Uh, yeah. Let me just get this up now. I've got it on my phone. Two seconds. Here we are. Ben Davidson. Boxer size, Ben. He strikes me as being a glorious hunter as well, wasn't he? He's always looking well, for what it. Yeah, what has he done with anybody from debut? He had the note with anybody from debut. Are they? It's called, hang on a minute, Seconds Out to Help, I Help AJ Be Usek. Ben Davison gives his opinion. I'm not even going to put it on here, but the point I want to make is I think it's a bit of a liberty and everything I've been banging on about for the last few weeks about fighters being stuck up people. We all know what Colwell were doing with Dylan White and Chisora. He was sliding into the WhatsApp messages for a long time before things yeah. happened. And eventually he got, to, he got to White, didn't he? But White got knocked out with him in his corner. And eventually he got to Chisora, Chisora, but Mark Tibbs and Don Charles were casualties in that. And I don't, I don't agree, I don't agree with any of that. I'm not a big massive Don Charles fan, don't know him, but I'm a, I'm a big uh, I'm a fan of Mark Tibbs as in a pal of mine. I don't like all yeah. that me because I think it's snide. I think there's too much of it going on in boxing. What do you think, uh, Andy? It's like I'm turning up to work the corner and for Billy Joe Saunders. What, what was that all about? It's... Well, what he was talking over Mark Tibbs, wasn't he? Ah, disrespectful. Huh? Yeah, I think it. I think it is disrespectful. And then he's going on social media bragging on about all wins he had last year, but he never mentioned losses when he was in corner. No. He's going on about his win with Devin Haney, but he wasn't the head trainer. He was seconds. Now, yeah, he's going on about that win, and then he's going, but he never mentioned the loss with Canelo where they were a second. So you can't have it both ways, Ben Davison. Not that he'll be watching. No. I won't accept him as a member on my channel. In fact, no. <laughs> I'll be throwing my front door for a cup of tea. He won't get through the front door. I'd throw a fucking cup of cold piss on him. <laughs> but, uh, people like that fucking annoy me. There's too many of them annoying me at the moment in boxing. And I'm, I'm going to end up with another stomach cold, aren't I? But, no, no. Uh, what do you think to the situation at the moment with WBC, Andy? White and Fury. Uh, I see, I see today they've uh, put White as a mandatory for Fury, is that right? Mm. I'd like to see I'd like to see that fight and I think uh, I'd like to see Dilly and White go to Frank Warren and sign up for the fight and leave Eddie Hearn. And, no, I've just said that the skip. coming out. I've said, you know what? Eddie Hearn hasn't mentioned anything on social media about Fury White. He hasn't mentioned the thing about it. But... yeah. Dylan White might be thinking, do you know what? Nobody wants to work with Eddie Hearn. He can't deliver. He might be ready to flee the nest. He might sign a two-fight deal with Fury. Where, why, why, uh, give, why give Eddie Hearn a slice of the pie for... Why give know, it, for he he doesn't have, have a contract with Eddie Hearn. He's a free agent. And Eddie Hearn's not with Sky. He's with his own, and yeah. that's all up in the air at the moment, isn't it? 
And that forty million request for step aside, man, that's ridiculous. That's just that, that just that really annoys me. That kind of I mean looking for a way out the whole, whole they're, looking, thing. they're looking for a way out of boxing then. And yeah. Once Joshua's gone, they're gone. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I mean I, I like Joshua when he first came out, but as soon as I heard him say, Oh, I want to be the first billionaire boxer, I'm just like just disgusting. Eh? Who needs a billion pounds? It's just pure greed, that's why he's Dug his me out. Dug himself in a hole there, didn't he? Oh, I, I that's, I mean, he's, uh, uh, this, this yeah. okay. goes you, against everything I believe in, isn't it? Yeah. Who do you think wins that fight, Andy? Fury and White. I think Fury wins that quite comfortably, yeah. On points. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I see Fury stopping him, I think. Maybe. Yeah. Seven, eight rounds, maybe. Um, I think if Bavette can, can put him away, and the way Fury's been punching lately, I think there's a good chance Fury could put him away early. You know? Yeah, but we can only compare. But, we can only compare his punching to hitting a fifteen stone man, though, can't we? Fifteen and a half. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. White's nah, White's a big, solid guy, isn't he? He's he's, he's a big, he's rough and tough. Man, yeah, rough, tough, yeah. rugged. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed when he was weighing in for the Mario Marius Wack fight, and uh, I think it was Bean that was saying, "Oh, he's looking in good shape." And it was, it was, he was, he <laughs> was about nineteen and a half stone or something, didn't he? He was just looking a, fat to me. Fat as a pig, Michelin man. So you've got uh, fury to be. I've got fury to be. I'm on points now, but not by stoppage. You've got a stoppage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the border control, really? Shambles. I think it's, it, to me, it reminds me of the Tory government. It's just corruption and in it for in it for the take, aren't they? It's, I just hate that. Yeah, just, uh, just, like I say, goes against everything I believe in, you know. But, uh, and I like this, uh, just anything to do with greed and stuff, stuff like that. I just hate it. And, and, and the way they're, they're, it's like they're unaccountable, you know, and nobody can, none of their referees or judges can do any wrong. I mean, that, that was disgusting at the weekend with Bradley Skeep and um, Steve Gray is telling him if he doesn't get up, he's going to have to stop it. Mm. So he was, he was, he was forced in a corner, wasn't he? I mean, that was disgusting. I thought he'd done well in that fight. I hadn't heard of Bradley Skeep for a long, long time. I kind of went away for boxing for a while, so I wasn't falling it as close as I've started falling it again, but, uh, I can remember he must have started really young. He's he was only 34. I thought he was older than that, but, uh, well, Brad, but I thought he'd done really well. Yeah. He I was thought he'd done well in that fight. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. He was Frank's fighter for yeah. years. Yeah. And you know, he, he just sat on the fence, didn't he? He bricked up. Yeah. He had to do it, didn't he? Because his big ticket seller had just been scored uh, and he should have got disqualified. Yeah. That was big ticket seller. Yeah, that, that should have been a straight disqualification. If, if it doesn't get overturned to a no contest, that's that's a disgrace, I would say. Yeah, it is. It is, and I feel for Bradley Ski. It looks like they might be having a rematch. I mean, we're not great, man, but I won't hold your breath. Yeah. They've offered him... I right. remember years and years ago, I mean, I, I, I can't remember what fight he was refereeing at the weekend. Like Ian John Lewis, he's he's probably my least favourite referee because I remember oh, years and years ago when he... It was Jeff McCreesh versus O.J. Abraham. And Abraham's dropped McCreesh twice, I think he dropped him. I think it was only a four or six round fight. And uh, and then he and John Lewis give McCreesh the win. It was like, oh. And then he was coming out with excuses about, oh, I had a big tea the night and all this. And it was like, that was that was one of the worst decisions I remember from way, way back. But um, it was probably on the par with Campbell Hatton's win um, uh, no, his last fight, fight before, right? That was a, that was another his outrage. Last fight, one of his one in Spain overnight, didn't he, Campbell? Atten? I see that. I, I read that somewhere. That he's he's won by he's won by. He got a stoppage. <laughs> okay, we're, we're, one of the worst fight. It's all gimmicks. He's going to get hurt, isn't it? Yeah, I think Conor will get hurt as well. I think he'll get involved in a tear up and go out, go gun ho. Uh, touch what he done looks that. I don't, I don't like to see anybody get hurt in boxing. But no, you don't want to see anybody get hurt. I think he'd get hurt, Conor Benno, he'd get stopped badly against somebody who can fight. 
he's a disaster yeah. to happen above British level. That's why that David Abbott, he should have wiped the floor with him, isn't he? He's uh, use him as a dishcloth. Yeah, and he, he keeps me in his. Anybody asks him about that fight, he just comes up with some rubbish excuses, isn't he? But he's a superstar, but he won't fight David even either. Yeah, I've been offered half a million, his biggest payday. Nah, you couldn't make it up. That's a bit... Nah, uh, it's... okay. Uh, the guy Dave Allen's fighting is called Christian Dan Fack, but we call him Christian Dumbfuck. So, all you are. <laughs> Christian <laughs> Dumfuck, 39-year-old Cameroonian who can't punch. He's had five fights and he's lost them all. Now, we're the Dumfucks for fucking tuning in, aren't we, on Fight Zone? Uh, <laughs> well, it's great, right, isn't it? What do you think is going to happen with Joe Joyce and Daniel Dubai? Do you think they'll get the title shots or do you think they'll be parked up fighting stiffs until they get the mandatories? So it could be tied up <laughs> so yeah, these belts, couldn't they? We Glory nah, and White, and then we've got Usek uh, and uh, and Joshua, and Joshua wins that. They're going to have a trilogy. I mean, Joe Joyce could end up like Pulev when Pulev fought yeah. Fury, Fury. He should have fought Joshua after he had to wait three years, didn't he? Yeah, I think Joyce would be Fury's toughest fight. Yeah, I think Joyce is. I think he's so underrated. He, he looks robotic, but he's really effective. Uh, I won. I think I won. But I went up one two hundred quid and I'm beating Dubois. I was quite chuffed with that. But, uh, oh yeah. So it's the only thing I bet on. Experience. Well, it's only two horses in race, isn't there? I said, <laughs> that was see? that was a was it a tenth round? I think it was a hundred yeah. to one odd. I couldn't believe the odds. I thought, why have they got Joyce as such an underdog? Because I really rate him. Eh? He reminds me of a young. A young George Foreman, just the way he moved like a mummy, as Ali called Foreman, didn't he? Uh, the way he moves and that, but he, he is strangely effective, but uh, and he can punch you now. He's got a good dig in him. So. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? I couldn't believe. Oh, sorry, well, sorry. No, I couldn't believe uh, Dubois getting the that WBA interim shot after coming off a loss. That was that's ridiculous as well. The WBA is just an absolute joke. Yeah. Well, look at the British Boxing Board of Control. They give Tommy Frank a, a British title fight for a vacant belt at flyweight, and he'd lost his last two. <laughs> they need to read the law book. But they, read, they need to read, read law book. They need to read their own rule book, don't they, before they start doing things like that? But what do you think to uh, women's boxing, uh, Andy? I don't mind women, women's boxing. I've nothing against women uh, boxing, but that's. It's never really. Some of the fights are okay, you know, but uh, it's not. There's, there's, it's maybe, maybe it's relatively new and compared to men's boxing, and there's not as many sort of fighters on the scene as there is in men's boxing. But um, I like Savannah Marshall. I think she's a great talent. Yeah, she's a lovely um, um, and. I, I know you've. I know you've got reserved views on Ebony Bridges, but I, she. If you take aside or the image the stuff, but uh, she certainly gives it a go when she goes in there. She's, she's no, uh, she's no shy about it. She got beat in the last fight, didn't she? Come on, let's have it right. Ah, she got but beat. Ah. She got bashed up with the yeah. good decision, and because she was Eddie's fighter, didn't she? she ah. got bashed up. But she's not, she's, ah. she's not bothered about getting a black eye. But when you get, no. when you get that oh, no. money, it's worth it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, aye. That's it. Uh, but, uh, she's got the, she's got the guard. Guard behind the rest. <laughs> Who were your favourite boxer when you were growing up then up your way? Because you're from Perth, aren't you? I'm from Perth, yeah. I liked uh, Ken Buchanan and, and Jim Watt and that. I, I, I liked Scott Harrison when he was on the go. I went to see him a couple of times uh, through oh, in Glasgow. Yeah. Scott Harrison. He was a tough guy, Scott Harrison. And, and he was always like, uh, a bit like Joe Joyce, he was always much tough early on. He, he never got any, he never seemed to get any easy fights when he, I think, it, I think it was its 10th fight about out to Madison Square Garden and fought Tracy Harris Patterson, I think it was. Uh, and he won that. I think he won that points, if I remember right. But uh, my first boxing memory is probably quite a sad one. It was uh, Muhammad Ali versus Larry Holmes. I'd only be about eight years old. Oh. And uh, and I couldn't, because I was only a, a wee laddie, and you heard all the good stuff about Muhammad Ali. I couldn't understand why he's not, why he's not winning it. But uh, I don't even know when you get older than that. 
Yeah, I've always liked Muhammad Ali, yeah. What would you think? Uh, I uh, think some... No, sorry. I think somebody gave me a shot of the Champions Forever video uh, when I was a teenager. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, Foreman, Fraser, Ali. I've got that somewhere. Lee, on BHS, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Who do you think's the uh, best pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world at the moment, Andy? At the moment, I like... Uh, I like Alexander Usyk. I think he's. I think he's got to be one of the top five. Definitely top five. Maybe the top two. I would say. I probably like Terms Crawford. I thought he had a good win there. Just uh, was that last week, a couple of weeks ago. And who else was there? It was uh, somebody else I had in my mind as well. He knew you, he knew he, you know, you know, the guy that knocked Jamie McDonald out, the Japanese kid, you like him? Japanese kid? Uh, I don't think I've seen him actually, no. Oh. Yeah, he's a good kid, he beat Jamie McDonald. He's, I think he, he's undefeated, knocks a lot of out. He's up there. Maybe I did see that fight, actually. Tyson Fury, yeah. you'd have to put him up there as well, wouldn't you? Okay, Fury, oh. he's, got to be the, he's got to be the number one heavyweight. I know I say Usyk, but just because he's, he's a good bit smaller than Canelo for his size, I think. Canelo, yeah. Canelo has got to be. Put him up there. He's got to be up. Don't know how he's going to go on at cruiserweight, though. But I think he's, he's picking the right guy, I suppose. To... They pick the right guy at light everywhere. They're not going to put him in with B to B, are they? No. It's like when Roy Jones fought John Ruiz. He was never going to beat Lennox Lewis, was he? So, no, they're putting yeah. the smallest one than the over limited on ability. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. Uh, well matched. Yeah, who do you reckon is best promoter in world boxing at the moment? At the moment, um, oh, probably Bob Arum, maybe. Um, 90 year old, it says a lot for the sport. <laughs> he's, he's still going strong, isn't he? That's uh, good on him. Well done, him. But you know what he needs, I like this new guy. That's, sorry? You know what he needs? A fucking shackle to nice seat chair, sitting in front of window and putting in an home. <laughs> Um, I quite like Ben Shalom. He's just come on the scene, but he's I like what he's doing so far. Eh? He's uh, not said much, has he? No, it's good. It's not about him though. It's he's making it more about the fighters as opposed to Eddie Hearn's face pop. Every time you put YouTube on, it's Eddie Hearn videos. You know, it's like can't get away Eddie, from it. People have got a bit tired of this Eddie Hearn character now, aren't they? Ah. I think so. I think. I think so. I think he's he he was gone. contradictions and all that, and going on about money and. Well, yeah, fucking back it's the crisps and all that bollocks. It's too much, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Who do you think is uh, the biggest liar in boxing? Who would you put as your top five liars in boxing? Uh, Eddie Ham, um, <laughs> liars as opposed to people Frank just man. looking, big sorry, you're a big fighting man in the hard, bro. <laughs> I've just boiled. Like I've just boiled the fire. I've just boiled some water on the campfire. I've had a pot noodle. I've just had it, had it. It was lovely. So here's me, John Fury, signing off. Women love me. Men want to be me. Pop, pop, bang. And I've got, I've got all the Muslims coming around for a pork casserole. <laughs> you know, what that about? I like him, but you've got to think he's a character. You've got, I've got to tell everyone he says with a pinch of salt. I find him entertaining, there, eh, but. And I like his car. <laughs> what, running on chip fat oil? <laughs> I had an old mate years ago that ran on chip fat oil, but if you had a hangover, the smell turned your stomach. Well, that's the only particular one, because before that, he used to have a 300D, but that one and the 190, the 190D one, there's something on the engine that you can do it on them. And John uh, I had a 300D, one. yeah. He's always he's always thinking about, you know, well, they're popular, aren't they? They're all, they're all this, like, G-Reg type, F-Reg, but... Yeah, that that type of car from thirty a year ago, it'll uh, it'll run on chip foil, so it's free. The car's running for free, isn't it? But I brought right. I, I brought down years ago without any diesel. Years ago in a Ford Orion diesel, and I couldn't get none any couldn't get no fuel from anywhere. I went in this shop and I got some cooking oil and I put <laughs> three liters of cooking oil in it. Got me out. So start with that. That's a true story. It used to be cheap, and then when people started using it. Uh, that pumped the price right up. Eh? I remember being, going to Tesco 
and uh, to buy some for my 300D. And I came out in the bin, the, the bin in the car park, full of empty bottles. <laughs> Everybody's been buying it. But uh, nah, they screwed that, putting the price up. Man. Unless you've got a friend, like a chippy, I suppose that's the. Uh, well, John's got them all on all on tender hooks, hasn't he, down there? They're terrified of him in his local Chinese. He pulls, <laughs> a, he pulls a pimp, mate. China man who owns it goes out, fills Merkel. up. John goes, if, if, fill that up, our kid, fill that up. Well, I've got to talk to our lovely wife. And they're going, you ain't got no chips, have you, love? I've had milk all day. So you're getting some chips. And then John will say, this is true. John will then say, you couldn't put a bit of that uh, sauce on that, could you? Oh, you ain't got a bit of that Peking duck, have you? And that, <laughs> you know, uh, get a bit of that soy sod for you know where he's leaving with two carrier bags full of Chinese. And he's car full. Oh, for free. For free, gratis. <laughs> Not bad, is it? Not bad, is it? That's, eh? that's good if you can get it. Typical travel. You've got to admire as, uh, as what would you say, as. Uh, is, is way of manipulating people in all these situations. <laughs> the only man I know that has got a, an eight and four and one record that ends up with a contract at BT Sport. Like, in it, Nick, for whatever he's done. And he's ended up with a job at BT Sport with a record like that. And other people can't get on at BT Sport who've been world champions, but they've got big John Fury, the big fighting man in the ring on the heart. Oh, pop, pop, bang, end on bomb. They've got John. Fury. They've got John Fury Sorry, on the sport, so he's he's not he's not behind the door, is he? But got to wish him well. He's a character, and you know I rinse him uh, all the time. But if he's going to behave like that and tell massive lies and whoppers and contradicts himself, well, you know what's going to happen, don't you? When that ice breaks, I'll be waiting for him underneath it. That's it. You know I mean, it's production. My job's so much easier, Andy. Uh, <laughs> you're pointing my old job, eh? That's it. His, his, predictions are, his predictions are better than David Hayes, though, and he's been a world champion. Oh. Yeah, but David Hayes is going to uh, back his mate and all that, isn't he? Wild as his mate, isn't he? Yeah. Well, my thing is switching off. Wait a minute. We appear to have lost Andy for the moment. Uh, what can you do? Story of my life, so I'll keep it going. So there's a lot of me going on in boxing, but you're probably going to see me go to town on the uh, on Dave Allen's situation tomorrow, uh, or or at some point in the next few days, because the board cannot sign off on a man Norton five pushing 39 year old who can't punch. It's a recipe for disaster and. Everybody's just putting their heads down and letting people do what they want. So, uh, I don't know what's happened there. He's, uh, he's gone, hasn't he? So, he's gone. We've lost Andy, but no problem. Bit of a disaster, his debut. He got all his tech stuff all mixed up at the beginning and, and at the end. It's a shame because he lives a long way away, but if it's bad winds up in Perth, Scotland, it'll be terrible, won't it? But we wish you well. So I hope you're watching this, Andy. Uh, weapon of the week, Andy Rose from Perth, Scotland. <laughs> so that's about it, really. So, all right, just a quick one for you. Quick news about Dave Allen and whatnot. Okay. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Don't have nightmares. <laughs>